In this video, I'm gonna give you a demo of a project that I've been working on lately, and it's a starter pack that you can purchase, and it's only $9, which as far as I'm aware is by far the cheapest starter pack. And it pretty much has everything that you need to create a subscription SaaS. So this is the demo site. And when I push to the actual starter pack, it gets deployed directly to this demo. So what you see in this demo is what is in the starter pack. And you can go to this demo site and you can sign up, you can create a subscription and all that sort of stuff. It's not gonna charge you anything. It's in test mode and I'll clear the data every few days. So you can see here, we have a pretty standard navigation. We have a hero section. We have our pricing table and these prices come directly from Stripe. So if you go update a price in Stripe, it's going to appear directly on this table, which I think is really nice. You don't have to copy price IDs and put them in environment variables or anything like that. You can switch to a yearly plan and save some money as well, or you can go to monthly. You can see here we have a really nice feature grid and these are all the features that are inside of this starter pack. And then you can see the tech stack that I'm using to build this and we'll get into the tech a little bit later. I'm gonna go into the code base and show you how I built some things and the sort of tech we're using because I think it's actually really cool and it's been really nice to develop on this stack. Okay, so we can go log in or sign up and I can sign up with GitHub. The email and password flow works as well. So it's going to send a activation email to the user and it's going to require them to activate. They can also click forgot password, reset their password, all that sort of stuff. We go log out and we go back to log in. You can see that you can click forgot password and then you can reset the password as well if you already have an account. But let's go sign back in. Okay, so now that we're signed in, you can see that we get our console here and this is a authorized screen only. So if the user's logged in, then they can see this screen. Otherwise they saw the landing page that you saw before and you can go to the console and this is the authorized screen. So you have to be logged in to be able to see this screen. If I open this up in incognito, you can see that it's going to redirect me to the login screen and it's also gonna have a redirect URL for the console. So when the user goes to log back in, they're going to be redirected to the console. Okay, so now that we're logged in, we can go to our pricing table and we can select a plan. So let's select this cheap one down here. By the way, all of these features and everything that you see on the table come from Stripe. So as long as you configure your products in Stripe correctly, they're going to show on that table. And I'll get some Stripe test card details. If this is a flow you wanna try, you can come to this testing page and you can just get one of these credit card details here. You can paste that in, put in a expiry that's in the future and a fake CSV, it just needs to be any three numbers. Then you can put in any name and you can click subscribe. Okay, so after the subscription flow, you get redirected back to this thank you page, which can obviously be customized however you like. And now we can go to our subscription screen and you can see here that we have our subscription that we just purchased. We also have our credit card details. So my customer in Stripe has paid for things several times. So that's why I have two different payment methods here. And then we have our invoices and you can download an invoice as well. Okay, so if you want to allow the user to update the card details, you can click update and this is going to bring you over to the Stripe billing portal where they can remove a credit card, they can cancel their subscription, all that sort of stuff. And then these changes are going to be reflected back inside of your application. As you can see, it has everything you need to be able to build the subscription flow. You can just start building your application on top of that. The other thing is the profile. So if we come over to the profile screen, you see that we have a very simple profile. And if we just change the name here, we can update this. And then this is just going to update the profile for you. You can also change the image and this goes into any S3 compatible storage. So you can use Cloudflare R2, you can use S3, or there's a few other providers as well for S3 compatible storage. So there are all the features that you'll get in the starter pack. So let's dive into the code and we can see what I've used to build this. So at its basis, this is a 10 stack start application. So we're going to be using 10 stack start, 10 stack router, 10 stack forms and 10 stack query. And then on top of that, we have better auth and TRPC. And they're the sort of really big things that make up this application. And they're all configured for you out of the box. So one thing that I've really been loving is better auth. And this has everything that you need to do authentication. So 
We can do our email and password authentication, and we just need to configure the emails that it sends. Then we can do our social providers, and it also has a really nice set of plugins. So I'm using the Stripe plugin here to do a lot of the heavy lifting for the Stripe subscription flow. And that just means that you have way less code in this code base. So you can see here we're getting the plans and we've enabled subscriptions. So these plans come directly from Stripe and they're cached here with this inbuilt in memory cache. And that is so every time you load the page, you're not making a call to Stripe, which doesn't really matter, but it just makes it a little bit faster. And then when we get a webhook to update a price or a product, we're going to clear out that cache and then we're going to repopulate it and everything is going to be nice and fresh. BetterAuth also has a set of hooks. So you can say, after I do something, do this other thing. So for example, here I have after, and this is going to create some middleware. And when the route is signed up, so after the user has signed up, I want to send them a welcome email. So the other thing that I'm using is TRPC. Now, a lot of people have asked me, oh, why do you have TRPC in there? Can't you just use server actions and API routes? Yes, you can. You can absolutely do that. And you can come in and you can rip TRPC out if you like. I really like having TRPC in here. And the reason is because if you use API routes, you need to create the API route, then you need to create the function to call that API route so you can use it in your query client. With TRPC, all you have to do is create these routers and then inside of these routers, you just start handling the functions. So in here, I have one for plans, and this is a query, and this is going to get the plans, and it's also going to infer the type for me. If you use the API routes, and then you create a server function, the boundary then between the API route and the actual returned result is broken. So you need to type those API routes manually. This is all typed for you. So you can see here, get plans returns a promise of an array of plans. And then when we're using that, you can see that our plans automatically get that type. So it's really nice for that. This is going to fetch these plans on the server. So I'm doing this inside of a loader, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can do queries and mutations on the client. And I'll show you an example of that. So you get this use TRPC hook here, and then you get TRPC out of that. And then you can call use mutation and use mutation just comes from React query or TenStack query. And then TRPC is going to give you the query options for that or the mutation options. So you can see here you get trpc.user.addInterestedUser and this is my procedure. And then I can just get my mutation options from there. And then it's very similar for queries as well. Let's find this one down here. Okay, so this is a query. Again, just comes from 10 stack query. I get my query options and I'm spreading this into an object because I also want to pass in my initial data that we loaded on the server. But of course you don't have to do that. If you didn't want to do that, you could just take this part here and you could just pass this into use query. And then this data is just all going to be typed for you. So inside of TRPC, you get this public procedure. And as the name suggests, this is something that you can call publicly. And you also get this protected procedure. And this is going to check that we have a user in context, which seems simple, but it's adding the user in context that was quite difficult, especially getting it to load on the server and the client. So I had to pass a bunch of headers around and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but basically this is going to create some TRPC context. And then we're going to get the session from better auth. And then we're going to add the user to context. You don't really need to worry about this. This is all built in and just ready to go and start using and start building upon. So the last thing I want to show you is how we actually get the user. So inside of our root component here, I'm getting the user and their subscriptions on the server. Of course, you don't have to do this, but I like the look of when you refresh the page, you don't have the buttons load up here and then just disappear. I like that it loads in the actual user at the top. So that's the only reason I've done that. But we have this server function here to get the user. And then we're calling that in before load. So you can see here we're using our query client, which is again, automatically in context for you. You can use this anywhere on any page. You can use the query client. And then we're going to pass the user down into the loader. And then we can use the user from our use loader data and we can pass it into the navigation. Same as subscription.
So you'll notice up here, we have a subscription, so it doesn't render the pricing link at the top here. We can render a different navigation once the user has subscribed. This auth function here comes from my server and then auth.server. And on here, you get an API with a bunch of different methods on it. So because we're using the Stripe subscription plugin, we can cancel our subscription, we can change email, we can change password. We can do all sorts of stuff, reset the password, sign in with socials, unlink an account, update the user, verify an email. There's a bunch of different stuff that you can do on the auth API. So you get a server-side auth API, which was what we're using here, but you also get a client-side API. And this auth client is something that you can then use in the browser. So you can see here, I have this sign out function here, and I'm calling the auth client dot sign out. And then of course, this is just going to sign the user out. This starter pack is something that I'm actively working on. So if you find any issues with it, let me know and I'll fix them as soon as possible. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise you can join the Discord. There is a special Indie Flow channel that you can ask your questions in. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.